book called Real Estate Money Secrets. We're on the chapter where we're talking about finding deals uh, from MLS and uh, from agencies. If you don't know what MLS is, uh, it's basically uh, multiple listing systems. Any property that's available for sale in any particular town is basically listed by agents on MLS. Um, the MLS represents the biggest market exposure for for any deal that's available for any property that's available for sale. Um, there are many reasons for that because obviously, it's MLS is linked to many websites that you may know of, like the Zillow's, like the Realtor.com, like uh, Redfin.com, Movoto.com. Any of the listing real estate agents website out there is linked to local MLSs. So there are MLSs, most MLSs are local to their particular area, but they, in this, in this time and age, they are now syncing and uh, they're using APIs to link those uh, particular systems with the outside systems such as Zillow.com for sale by owner.com, uh, Redfin.com, Realtor.com, and many other websites that anyone can basically access from anywhere in the world. Once upon a time, um, people will swear up and down that that would never happen. Like if a, if a property is not listed on MLS, it can't be listed anywhere else. Or if it's listed on MLS, it cannot sync with other websites. But it's a digital age, so uh, it's basically like arguing with yourself if you're still arguing that because honestly we're in the information age and the easy access to information means everything money it means more more volume of sales it means more revenue and if it means more revenue it's only a matter of time okay uh, if it means better results it's only a matter of time before uh, everything else is synced with it you can see such examples even in i was just talking to someone like things like lyft and uber uh, in new york city the traditional taxi drivers are still frowning at this idea of Uber and Lyft because you know, they are powerful, you know, they are powerful behemoths. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that the truth can only go for so long in, in hiding. It will come out uh, at some point. All right. So the truth is that technology, you can't stop technology or civilization because it's the very nature of human beings. It's part of uh, innate characteristics of human beings. So you can try to stop it for a little bit but you can't stop it, <laughs> okay? And it's the same thing in our game of real estate as well, too. Uh, MLS uh, used to be something that's so secret, a secret platform where only agents have access to the information of it, but all of that is disappearing slowly but surely. The only thing that will never disappear is the idea of being a licensed agent, which means you have been recognized by a state as having the the, the opportunity to represent somebody's fiduciary interest, okay? Um, that's always going to be there. I use Realtors a lot uh, because, honestly, it's not a competition between wholesaling and, 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 and Realtors. Realtors are basically sitting down and say, hey, you're licensed to sell my house, list it on the market, aka MLS, and sell it. Uh, wholesalers are basically people who find the deals, okay? The wholesaling Real estate wholesaling is the heart and the science of finding deeply discounted properties. Then turn into for profit. <laughs> okay. So if you understand that, then the agents are basically licensed people to represent the client's interest. The wholesaler does not represent anybody's interest outside of profit. Okay. They find a deeply discounted property. Take an equity with interest in the property by putting it under contract. Okay, equitable means the, the value of the property. They have interest in the value of the property. An agent does not technically have interest in the value of the property. Okay, they have interest in protecting the interest of the client, of the seller or the buyer. They are technically two different things. Okay. That's why they get paid in commissions, but you get paid based on the value in the property, okay? 
So they get paid, the agents get paid based on the value in the sales of the property. You get paid based on the value you can add on to the property. Now we can reframe that in multiple different ways, but the fact of the matter I'm trying to share with you is that wholesalers and realtors do two different things. If you have the capability of doing both things, sorry about that, I didn't use my mic. It should be better now. Sorry. All right. <laughs> so if you have the capability of using um, both both uh, of, of being able to become a wholesaler and a, and a licensed agent, it can only help your, your, your bottom line, your revenue, okay? It can't hurt you. So people ask all the time, should I get licensed? Do I need to get licensed? No, you don't need to get licensed to be a wholesaler. However, to represent people's interest legally, you do need to be licensed. If you're going to be advertising publicly someone's house for sale, yes, technically you need you need to be licensed. If what you're marketing is the contract that you've put on the house, meaning the right to purchase the house, you don't need a license for that. You can rewind this part if you're watching a rebroadcast and watch as many times as you want to get a grasp of that. But today we're talking about finding deals on MLS. We're talking about entry strategies. How do you enter into a deal? That's what we've been talking about. We talked about share sale on the last video. Right now we're talking about MLS and agencies. Okay. So we have a chapter that's already written. We're going to read it to each other, proofread it, make sure it's clean. And then also I'm going to record it. And then uh, we'll take it from, from there. So I'm going to share my screen with you as usual. And we're going to dive into this beautiful chapter. All right. Chapter 14, Agency and MLS. Earlier in the book, I clarified on the difference, the difference between on and off market deals. Uh, I want to say differences. Buying and selling real estate can become very complicated without the right people and entities on your real estate team. Having an agency and the MLS uh, is great leverage point for a buyer and seller. Real estate market is truly a big marketplace. So you need to be aware that the market goes up and down on a daily basis. Some people's livelihood depends on this ups and downs. All right. So let me, let me clarify something I was trying to clarify that I missed earlier. So one of the reasons why the MLS is such a huge platform is because you have literally hundreds of thousands of agencies around the nation that have access to MLS and they have invested interest in selling your house. So if you have a house to sell and you're looking for highest and best offer, right? Obviously, uh, as wholesalers, that's not our ideal. We're looking for someone that's looking to get rid of a house. A motivated seller who doesn't care about highest and best offer, but they just want to get rid of a, of a house. That's what we look for as wholesalers. An, agents, an agent is basically there to service people looking for highest and best offer. They have time, right, as luxury, and they want that to help them attract highest and best offer. So not only is the person who list the house for you going to be helping you to market the house, the rest of the, all the licensed agents in New Jersey, for example, has the right, actually all around the nation, has the right to bring a buyer to your deal in exchange for a commission. So it's basically a massive, a massive uh, a hub to market your property. Not just that, as wholesalers, it's a massive hub for you to find deals. And that's what we're talking about right now, right? So let's continue. All right, so that's just another reason why uh, I had to basically uh, show you a few things about, you know, MLS. So let's continue. Due to that very fact, it ver it's, high, it's highly beneficial, highly beneficial for you to be educated in real time on the market values. The closest to the most professional opinion on the market value is via the licensed agencies by way of the multiple listing systems, the MLS. Traditionally, the MLS is a system only accessible by licensed real estate brokers and agents. But with the emergence of websites such as Zillow, Trulia, which I forgot to mention, Redfin, and Xterra, that's becoming more and more of a thing of the past. I'm going to say a thing. 
everyone with enough interest are continue to have access to to more information all right more information data is everywhere and more of it is collected as we live our daily lives in real time. The most common example of that is the data collection that is in effect every time, that's in effect every time you are driving with the GPS. As you agree to and actually use the device, you're in fact collecting data that other users get to use to make intelligent decision on directions while driving. With such access available, with such access available, or with such access available are also contact information, number of days on the market, and other information that gives you more intelligence as related to value of a property. For example, when a property sits on the market for sale more than 100 days, it's an indication that it's worth less than whatever the seller thought it was worth. The market is also right. If the market tells you that they don't want the property by way of not putting in offers, it's not just true. It's in fact the reality of the value of the subject property. Okay, I'm gonna put a comma here. It's not just true. It's in fact, uh, I'm actually gonna online this. It's in fact the reality of the value of the subject property. The best source for this level of information is the agency and effectively the MLS. As a buyer, it's a source of intelligent market information. As a seller, it creates the large market exposure for your mark for your property. Basically, there's an expensive cost for avoiding the services of an agency and effectively leveraging the MLS. Let's take a hundred thousand dollars property for example. Agents would typically charge 2.5 percent to 3 percent to list properties for sale. So so you've decided to sell it. The first step is to call a licensed real estate agent. The listing agreement stipulates that when the property sells 2.5 percent of the sales price will be deducted from the sales proceeds as fees or sales commissions for the agent so 2.5 percent of one hundred thousand dollars twenty five hundred dollars a good agent will create a compelling presentation of your property both for viewing inspection and from an informational standpoint then the property will be listed on the mls for maximum exposure that also means that other agents licensed to work within the country can bring buyers to your property. Simply put, you have every agent working for you and all you have to pay is the 2.5%. Isn't that an awesome deal? Also note that the more the sales price is, the more your sales proceeds will be. More importantly, the more sales commissions, the more sale commissions the agent gets to make. That means, that means that the agent has invested interest in getting you more money. If the agent can get you $150,000, you get more, you get more, you get $50,000 more. You get $50,000 more, the agent will simply work. Agents can get you $150,000 you get $50,000 more. The agent will simply work his or a butt off to get you that extra $50,000 simply because they want that extra $1,250. What's the alternative? I know that technology is improving every day. Because of that, it can seem that any individual can list their house, their own house on the market. It's called for sale by owner. And yes, it's possible for a property to sell by owner. So can it be sold a lot earlier for a lot more money with an agent via the MLS? Definitely yes. This is especially true because the agents or agents work hard to do exactly that for you. With for sale by owners, I'm going to put that in quotes. 
With for sale by owners, certain agency allows clients to pay a flat fee just for exposure to the MLS market. As usual, nothing is impossible with technology. However, the seller will have to be responsible for the sale presentation. The sales presentation, I want to say sales presentation, part of selling the property, such as staging and negotiation and negotiating offers. So the services of the agency and exposure to the MLS either as a buyer or seller cannot hurt you, but lack thereof can definitely hurt you without knowing. So it makes sense to leverage the two of them whenever you can. One of the best things, one of the best things about agencies is that there is no charge unless your desired result is achieved. If it costs you nothing to use them, just use them. It simply means a bigger team for all your real estate endeavors. You can take you can take it a step further. Get licensed as a real estate agent. It's another part of this thing that you can that can only help you. You can be a part-timer who simply makes money for referrals to full-timers. The only requirement from a regulatory standpoint is full disclosure when engaged personally in a transaction as a buyer or seller. On the next chapter, I will share the best way for you to find some awesome find awesome deals. No one is talking about this strategy, not many, but I figured that it's but I figured that is the exact reason why I should share with you. It's a method that will position you to leverage the number one secret of the game, consistency. All right, so that was that. All right, so we cleaned it up a little bit. That didn't have too many typos, but a few nonetheless. All right, so let me just uh, share a few things here as before we continue. All right, so as far as finding deals on MLS, okay, first of all, um, a lot of agents are very naive to the possibilities in real estate. Okay, there's just so much opportunity in real estate um, because it's basic need of humans, you know, it's basic need of human beings. So because of that, um, it presents a lot of opportunities. You can, it's like entertainment, right? The only thing, the only profession in entertainment is not just singing or acting. All right, you have assistants, you have uh, administrative positions, you have executive administrative positions, you can be an entertainment lawyer, you can be, there's so much, you know, there's so much, you can be um, a media person, a PR professional, you know, there's um, a gazillion different opportunities in entertainment, it's the same thing when you think of real estate, right, uh, wholesaling is, is just, it's just one piece of the puzzle. And I feel like wholesaling is actually being an entrepreneur, okay? You're actually being the entrepreneur, a, a part of of real estate. But if you're looking for jobs, something that's more closer to a job to help you fill in the gaps and bring in more steady income, you can be a title agent. You can be a, a, a assistant at a real estate agency office. You can be obviously an agent. You can even go further and become a broker. There's a lot of investors, successful investors that become brokers themselves. As a matter of fact, one, one of my number one early mentors in this game back from back in 2005, his name is Glenn Gallucci. He's been in the game for 30 years. It's all of the above, okay? It's a wholesaler probably less of a wholesaler but it's an investor it's a construction professional it's a uh it's a private lender he lends his money obviously it's a cash buyer he's a broker he runs a brokerage so basically you can hang your license there if you're licensed he understands the investing side of game and the creative opportunities are available in real estate so he's a lot more open he's not the type to tell you, you can't do that you can't do that you can't do that you have a lot of people say you can't do that without uh, even exploring the possibilities first, you know. So uh, I just wanted to encourage you that, you know, like you, there's so many opportunities. While you're waiting for your first deal to close, start looking at other things that you may be able to do. Maybe a school, you can go to go get licensed and things like that. See, I'm not a guru that sells of fifty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, at least not yet, okay? But 
but I can tell you for sure. So I'm not, I don't have any invested interest in telling you not to get licensed. You know, when I'm trying to tell you $50,000, uh, $50,000, uh, if I'm trying to sell you a $50,000 seminar, then I can basically say, no, you don't need to be licensed and give you all the fluffs, right? But fluffs apart, right? You can get started as a professional in the game. If you feel like there's opening for that, you need a nine to five or something, go to school, learn the other aspects of this game. When you put a house under contract, that contract, you know, we're talking contracts now, there's attorneys involved in that, it's attorney reviews that will typically be done with a conventional deal, right? So if you're already in that line, as, a, as maybe you're going to a law school, it may not be a bad idea to go in the direction of real estate, you know? Um, but beyond that, EMD, you put an EMD in title escrow or as an attorney, you know, you can become a title professional. You can start even as an intern at the title company, you know, or and learn that game because if you understand that game, is it's going to be a leverage in addition to what you already learning when it comes to wholesaling. So just wanted to share that with you really quickly. And more importantly, before I go on to uh, record this this uh, audio book, you need to understand that when you're licensed or you have a licensed agent on your team, you can have access to your local MLS and the most accurate data. When it comes to local MLS, it's going to be on your MLS, okay? And when it comes to properties, uh, properties that need work, that needs TLC, you can search for things like need TLC, or you can simply search for TLC in the remarks area of your of your um, of of your MLS, okay? You can search for fixer uppers, you know. So majority of uh, real estate agents out here are newbies who don't know what they're doing, you know, for the most part. But that's not a bad thing. Everyone starts from somewhere, okay? So you can get in touch with some of them. You can give them a call and say, hey, when did you start? If they started within the last three years, they're newbies. That's just what it is, okay? And you can say, listen, let's hook up. If they start within the last three years, chances are that they're not closing as many deals as they want to or maybe haven't even closed a single one. Hook up with them. Tell them to join forces together as a team. The most prof the most successful real estate wholesalers in the game are partners with brokers they have access to the mls what does that tell you maybe you should have access to okay so you're not just doing that so you can use them you're doing that because you also need a team a lot of people forget that part you need a team in real estate because you're not going to close a deal without sharing money with somebody maybe an attorney a title company a mortgage broker a hard money lender broker you're going to share the money anyway, all your profit with somebody. So you might as well get into the habit of knowing that you need a team. So the best, one of the best, in my opinion, people to partner with so you can find some deals on the MLS and things like that are agents, especially new agents. If it's an established agent that's doing well, they probably don't have time for you. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes people send an email to an agent to send them comps. And when they share such comps with me, I'm like, why are you sending me a listing? list of active listings and under contract comps because they don't know any better see active listings and under contract comps does not tell me anything about the value of a property people are delusional all the time and they will list their house 20 10 percent more than what it's actually worth people do that all the time so an agent who is savvy enough knows that right as a matter of fact agents who are savvy enough don't take such listings they they find a way to communicate the actual value of the property and don't allow the property to stay on there at that value forever. That's why you see price change back on the market, things like that. So anyway, my point here is that find ways to partner with agents. They're not your enemy, okay? And if you're an agent, find ways to partner with wholesalers. You guys are not enemies. Everyone will get paid. There's more than enough. There's zero reasons to pick uh, a beef with each other. Zero reasons. It doesn't make any sense. All right, so with that being said, let's go back and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, finish our recording, and then we'll have this particular audio book chapter in the bag as well. I'm sharing my screen so you can read along with me. Okay, uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Here you go, and start recording. Hello, 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 hello. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Let me turn off my heater over here.
chapter 14, Agency and MLS. Earlier in the book, I clarified on the differences between on and off market deals. Buying and selling real estate can become very complicated without the right people and entities on your team, on your real estate team. Having an agency and the MLS is great leverage point for a buyer and seller. Real estate market is truly a big marketplace. So you need to be aware that the market goes up and down on a daily basis. Some people's livelihood depends on these ups and downs. Due to that very fact, it's highly beneficial for you to be educated in real time on the market values. The closest to the most professional opinion of the market values is via the licensed agencies by way of the multiple listing systems, the MLS. Traditionally, the MLS is a system only accessible by licensed real estate brokers and agents. But with the emergence of websites such as Zillow, Trulia, Redfin, and etc., that's becoming more and more of a thing of the past. Everyone with enough interest are continuing to have access to more information. Data is everywhere, and more of it is collected as we live our daily lives in real time. The most common example of that is the data collection that is in effect every time you are driving with the GPS. As you agree to and actually use the device, you are in fact collecting data that other users get to use to make intelligent decisions on directions while driving. With such access available are also contact information, contact information, number of days on the market, and other information that gives you more intelligence as related to value of a property. For example, when a property sits on the market for sale more than 100 days, it's an indication that it's worth less than whatever the seller thought it was worth. The market is always right. If the market tells you that they don't want the property by way of not putting in offers, it's not just true. It's in fact the reality of the value of the subject property. The best source for this level of information is the agency and effectively the MLS. As a buyer, it's a source of intelligent market information. As a seller, it creates the large market exposure for your property. Basically, there is an expensive cost of avoiding the services of an agency and effectively leveraging the MLS. Let's take a $100,000 property, for example. Agents, agents would typically charge 2.5 to 3% to list properties for sale. So you've decided to sell it. The first step is to call a licensed real estate agent. The listing agreement stipulates that when the property sells, 2.5% of the sales price will be deducted from the sales proceeds as fees or sales commission for the agent. 2.5% of $100,000 is $2,500. A good agent will create a compelling presentation of your property, both for viewing inspection and from an informational standpoint. Then the property will be listed on the MLS for maximum exposure. That also means that other agents licensed to work within the country can bring buyers to your property. Simply put, you have every agent working for you and all you have to pay is the 2.5%. Isn't that an awesome deal? Also note, that the more, also, note that the more the sales price is, the more your sales proceeds will be. More importantly, the more sale commissions the agent gets to make. That means that the agent has invested interest in getting you more money. If the agent can pay you 150, if the agent can get you $150,000, you get $50,000. Yeah. If the agent can make if the agent can get you $150,000, you get $50,000 more. The agent will simply work his or her butt off to get you that extra $50,000 simply because they want that extra $1,250. Okay, so it's, a, it's an error here. Let me fix this. Uh, that's $50,000 more. In a, that, that's $50,000 uh, 
more words. Uh, sales. sales proceeds. There you go. Sales proceeds. If the agent can get you $150,000, that's $50,000 more in sales proceeds. The agent will simply work his or her butt off to get you that extra $50,000 simply because they want that extra $1,250. What's the alternative? I know that technology is improving every day. Because of that, it can seem that any individual can list their own house on the market, list their own house list their own house on the internet. It's called for sale by owner. And yes, it's possible for a property to sell by owner. So can it be sold a lot earlier for a lot more money with an agent via the MLS? Definitely yes. This is especially true because the agents work hard to do exactly that for you. With for sale by owners, certain agencies allow clients to pay a flat fee just for exposure to the MLS market. As usual, nothing is impossible with technology. However, the seller will have to be responsible for the sales presentation part of selling the property such as staging and negotiating offers. So the services of the agency and exposure to the MLS either as a buyer or seller cannot hurt you. But lack thereof can definitely hurt you without knowing. So it makes sense to leverage the two of them whenever you can. One of the best things about agencies is that there is no charge unless you desired, unless your desired result is achieved. If it costs you nothing to use them, just use them. It simply means a bigger team for all your real estate endeavors. You can even take you can even take it a step further. Get licensed as a real estate agent. It's another part of this thing that can only help you. You can be a part-timer who simply makes money from referrals to full-time to full-timers. The only requirement from a regulatory standpoint is full disclosure when engaged personally in a transaction as a buyer or seller. On the next chapter, I will share the best way for you to find awesome deals. No one is talking about this strategy, not many, but I figure that but I figure that is the exact reason why I should share with you. It's a method that will position you to leverage the number one secret of the game, consistency. All right. So all right, so one of the things that I have to do later on here. Oh, we're done with that recording, by the way. Let me just save it. One of the things I want to do here is uh, soundproof my studio. I have to do that at some point. Um, if you are, if you're expecting more books from me, I hope I bring out more books. I definitely uh, want to do that. From a desire standpoint, I would personally like to have 100 books on the market. So this is only my third book. Let me save that. That's chapter 14. And we're getting close to the end. We have like two or three more chapters to go through. Uh, all right, all right. Let's see here. All right. So I'm definitely going to be uh, doing more books. Um, I have two two books on the market. This is the book we're just proofreading is going to be a third book. All right, and uh, this is the first book that I wrote is, uh, that I published. That's published. Okay, you can find it everywhere. But the best way to find it is go to uh, smartrealestatewholesaling.com. You can get it free, a free PDF. Okay, and um, uh, but if you want it in audiobook uh, or Kindle or paperback like this, maybe you like to mark it up, uh, then then you can also find the same spot. Uh, it's everywhere. Amazon is everywhere, but just go to smartrealestatewholesaling.com. And my second book is a book that I wrote with my wife. It's called Get My Marriage Back. You can find it at getmymarriageback.com. If you if you know anybody that's that have troubles in marriage, uh, it's, it's from a standpoint of people that have survived the worst turmoils that you can imagine when it comes to marriage. So it's both of us from our perspective. And that book is also there, getmymarriageback.com, if that's something of interest for you. This book is going to be my third book. My goal is to have 100 books out there. I just have, I just know, uh, and I've been through a lot. And I can, you know, 
Uh, some books that I recommend um, are pretty good. Some of my favorite books are right here on this table right here. But my favorite book is probably Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I give it to my son to read. I need to stay on top of him to make sure he's reading it. Uh, my son is 10 years old. Uh, he's going to be 11. In, he's going to be 11 in June. Uh, but I want him to read that book right now. So it's the book that basically, you know, that injected into my head, uh, that bit me with the bug of entrepreneurship. Uh, but this other book, this is a good book, Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. It's a good book. Um, Unshakable, Tony Robbins, fantastic book. Money Master the Game. Huge book, okay? It's a great book too. All right, these are some of my favorite books out here. So, I just thought I'll, I'll share it with you. The best book right now to get, if you're here because of real estate, is SmartRealEstateWholesaling.com. Just go there, grab the copy for free. Uh, if you're looking to get started in wholesaling and you basically have the most commonly asked question ever, how do I get started? You simply want to go to ThreePillarSystem.com. 3pillarsystem.com and get started. It's only $10 per month, but we charge a $197 join fee one time. It's waived completely right now. So you can join right now, 3pillarsystem.com. All right. And uh, and absolutely, if you're brand new, make sure you subscribe because I'm here virtually every day, at least every other day I'm here, unless I'm on the road. Go watch. Uh, sometimes when you don't see me here at 12, it's because I'm out on the road uh, inspecting projects. So, for example, tomorrow, Friday, I won't be here because I already know on my schedule um, I'm going to be uh, out on the road. As a matter of fact, uh, I will be on the road tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so actually I just thought about some, some a coaching that I scheduled. I have to reschedule that. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully you've been enlightened and educated. Click like, share, subscribe. Please make sure if I said anything, you got any kind of value from this session, please make sure you click the like button. It lits blue before you leave this page. It's your way to help me spread the news and get this channel growing. Please, I really, really appreciate that. That's the best thing you can actually do for me. And I and I appreciate your time hanging out with me. Uh, hopefully, you've been enlightened and educated. Comment below if you have any questions. I am open to your questions. I get a lot of questions from all different type of sources. Most of the questions coming by way of email. That's perfectly fine too. But if you leave comments here, it helps the algorithm expose my channel a little bit more. If you don't want anything specific to you, just make it generic. And that helps me as well too. Hopefully, you've been enlightened and educated. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.